Okay, continuing right where I left off, we are going to finish the sketch of the example that I gave in the last video. Okay, now to our new information, concavity and inflection points. So we do that from the second derivative. So remember the first derivative was 15x to the fourth minus 20x to the third. So our second derivative then is 60x to the third minus 60x squared. Now, I know I need to set that equal to zero, so let me go ahead and factor this a little farther by pulling out a 60x squared. Leaves me with x minus 1. So when I set that equal to zero, that gives me the solution x equals zero, multiplicity 2, and x equals 1. So those are the numbers that I'm going to put on my number line. So these are my possible inflection points. So we need to confirm whether they are or are not, in fact, inflection points. If our concavity switches from down to up or vice versa, then they are. If it doesn't switch, meaning it goes from up to up or down to down, then they are not inflection points. Okay, so I need to test these points in my second derivative. Something to the left is zero, so negative one. Something in the middle, so one half and something beyond 1, so 2. So if I plug it into the first here, if I take a negative 1 and square it, that's positive. So this gives me positive. If I take a negative 1 minus 2, that gives me negative. So that tells me that this here is negative, and so my graph is concave down. If I plug 1 half into this, 1 half squared is positive, times 60 is positive, 1 half minus 1 is negative. So this gives me a negative, which says that it's also concave down between 0 and 1. Now 2, 2 squared times 60 is positive, and 2 minus 1 is positive. So that tells us this is positive and that this is concave up. Okay. So if we want concave up like a cup, that's happening from 1 to infinity. If we want concave down like a frown, that's happening between negative infinity and 1. Even though we have a pause, or it looks like a pause at 0, we actually don't have an inflection point there. And so that's my next thing. Inflection points are only when it switches. So we have an inflection point when your x value is 1. And again, we might want to plot this on the graph to figure out where it actually is. So I need to plug in 1 to my original function. So it gives me 3 minus 5 minus 1, or negative 3. So I have an inflection point at this point right here. So one more time, if your concavity does not switch, then this is not an inflection point. However, if it switches from down to up or up to down, then that, in fact, will be an inflection point. So what we need to do now, then, is we need to put all of this information on our graph. Okay, so I have transferred all of the information over. So we know our domain is all real numbers. We know what the end behavior of the graph looks like. We know our y-intercept. We also found that that y-intercept was a maximum value. We couldn't figure out our x-intercept, so that one was unknown. With increasing, decreasing max and min, I transferred the graph over in our maximum value and our minimum value. With the inflection points, I transferred my sign chart over, also the inflection point at 1, negative 3. So let me draw all the points on the graph first, and then I'll fill it in with the increasing, decreasing, and the concavity. So I have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1. And let me go ahead and do my tick marks by a little bit more expanded. So, so let me just say this is 1, 2, 3. So this is 1 and 1 third, and then negative 4. I'll keep my y values the same. So there is my minimum value. I have an inflection point at 1, negative 3. 
So there is an inflection point. So those are all of my points. And now I can fill it in with what I know about increasing, decreasing, and concavity. So I know that I'm increasing up to zero and then down between zero and four-thirds or one and one-third, so shaping it like this. But I also know that it's concave down between zero and one. So I need to make this image into a down motion. So there's that. So I know it's increasing past one-third, so it's going up through here. But I also know it's concave up past one, so this needs to be a cup motion. So from one on, it's a cup motion where it's increasing past one and one-third. So it looks something like this here. Okay, so I think I have sketched the graph of this here. Now let's go ahead and double check it with our graphing calculator. So I have my original function plugged in. I've changed my window a little bit because I've stretched out my x value, but I've kept my y value the same. So let's go ahead and graph this now. So we can see concave down on the left, concave up on the right, increasing, decreasing, increasing motion with a maximum here, a minimum there, an inflection point in between, and the only thing that we didn't find by hand was our x-intercept. And so now we can see that our x-intercept is somewhere here. If you want to find the exact intercept, you can do that with your calculate feature. So second, calculate. You do that by finding the zero, which is just a fancy word for x-intercept. So it says left bound, so it wants you to go somewhere left of where you think your x-intercept is. So here, right bound, somewhere right of where you think your intercept is. It's going to find your intercept between those two arrows or between those two dotted lines. Guess to where you think it is, just get as close as you possibly can. Hit enter. And it tells you your zero is approximately at 1.7. Now this y here, negative 2e to the 12th, that scientific notation, negative 2 times 10 to the negative 12th. So it's just the decimal's weird way of saying it's approximately zero. So there is my y-intercept. And it looks like I've graphed that one pretty accurately as well. So now we have figured out how to graph all of these steps by hand and only checking with the graphing calculator.